Let's work on a, a supplementary problem for the, um, the, the problem we did in the discussion video where there's a, a light fixture and it's hanging down and we're supporting it by, by a rod. Um, so Raf had asked a question uh, about how many bolts would it take if you wanted to maintain a factor of safety of one or how many bolts would it require if you wanted a factor of safety of four. So we're going to take a look at that. Uh, let's start by just quickly sketching out what we're working with here. So we've got a rod and there is a flange on that rod. And the flange holds this light. This is a light fixture here. Got all the light coming out. And uh, then we have screws that are going. I'm just going to kind of draw it crudely through here. But we have patterned radially. So if you were to look straight down at this um, in this direction, what you would see is your rod in the middle and then your um, flange and then your light, which I don't know what the light looks like. You know, something like that. It's not a very good drawing. And then we'd have uh, the, the heads of our screws patterned around radially like that. So what we're looking at is how many screws would we need to have a factor of safety of one versus a factor of safety of four. And uh, the problem originally uh, gave us a 200 pound force um, uh, of the, the light. So this was 200 pounds force. Um, and <clears throat> uh, Raf provided uh, a screenshot from McMaster showing some low strength steel hex head screws and there were various uh, screw diameters, uh, but they all have the same tensile strength, which was 60,000 PSI. Now, another, another good point Raf brought up was, why, why is McMaster giving us tensile strength instead of yield strength? Well, sometimes the terms tensile strength and yield strength are used interchangeably. Um, what's not used interchangeably is ultimate tensile strength or uh, yield strength. Ultimate tensile strength is, is always ultimate tensile strength and, and, and never is used interchangeably for yield strength. But sometimes just the term tensile strength can be used interchangeably for yield strength. So I'm, I'm sure that's what McMaster is giving us here. Uh, for this problem, we're just going to make that assumption that our tensile strength given from McMaster is actually, in fact, the yield strength. So we'll say that equals 60,000 PSI. Now, the smallest bolt diameter here that, that Raf had in the screenshot was 3 eighths of an inch. And I am positive that uh, even just one three eighths of an inch bolt is going to be enough to support a 200 pound light fixture. In fact, it's going to be far more than enough. So we're going to change the problem a little bit here in order to facilitate solving the equation, uh, solving the problem for factor of safety in one and factor of safety four that would actually make sense. So instead of 200 pounds force, we're going to say this is a gigantic mammoth light and it weighs 50,000 pounds force. So that being the case, how many screws do we need to uh, satisfy the, uh, the, the problem here for a factor of safety of one? So if we have a factor of safety of one, that means that our yield uh, strength has to equal the stress in the bolts. And we don't know how many bolts we have, but if I were to write this out uh, as an equation here, it would be stress equals force over area. And our area is going to depend on the number of bolts, right? Because we're looking at the cross-sectional area of each one of these bolts here. And um, I only show three right here because that's we're looking at a front view. But, you know, however many bolts we have, we have to multiply that into our uh, into our A, our cross-sectional total area. So uh, how, can we, uh, how can we write that? Um, uh, area is pi r squared, and if we have multiple bolts in there, we can just say that the, the, the number of bolts equals, we'll just say it equals n, small n. So if that's the case, then our, our total cross-sectional area is going to be n pi r squared, right? The number of bolts times pi r squared. So uh, sigma 
stress equals force over n pi r squared. And <clears throat> we, we know um, because we're looking for a factor of safety of 1, in other words, yield strength equals the, the stress value, we can just say that sigma equals 60,000 psi. We know that our force is 50,000 pounds. Uh, we know that our radius, well, uh, I'm just, I'm gonna pick from this table that Raph listed in the lesson. Uh, the smallest radius of the bolt is 3 eighths of an inch. So we're gonna use that for our radius. Um, and then we, uh, basically just solve for n. So, uh, solving for n gives us n equals force over sigma pi r squared. And that equals 50,000 pounds force over 60,000 pounds force per square inch um, times pi times r squared. So our, our diameter, I think I said radius before, our diameter of the bolts is 3 eighths of an inch. So our radius is going to be um, half of that, so it's three sixteenths of an inch squared. So let's do some math there. Let's see, I'm just going to pull up a calculator here on my uh, on my computer. Um, so sixty thousand times three point one four times point one eight seven five times point one eight seven five equals. 6,623.4, and that is the denominator, and the numerator is 50,000 pounds force. So, uh, for a factor of safety of 1, uh, we get, let's see, 50,000 divided by 6623 equals 7.5. Seven and a half bolts. Of course, we'd never use half a bolt, so we'd probably just round up to eight bolts. Now, let's say we wanted a factor of safety of four in here. So instead of our yield strength equaling our stress, now our yield strength has to be four times as great as our stress, right? Because if we solve for sigma, um, let's just say we solve for sigma and it's x. And uh, in order to have a, a factor of safety of four, uh, we need four x to equal the yield strength. So to do that, we use the same equation. All right, we've got sigma equals f over n pi r squared, uh, except in, uh, this time we're, we're going to substitute, um, uh, it's going to be 4 sigma. 4 sigma equals uh, f over n pi r squared. Let's see, is that the right thing to do? 4 sigma. I'm thinking here, give me a minute. Nope, that is not the right thing to do. What we really want to do is uh, 1 quarter of sigma because uh, on the left side of the equation here, that is ultimately what's going to get compared to the yield strength, and we want our yield strength to be four times our our stress. So let's see if we write that out separately. Let's just say yield strength equals four times our stress, four times sigma. That means sigma has to be yield strength over four equals sigma. Um, yeah, so yield strength over four. That's really what we're doing. All right, so now that we have that in place, we can solve for n again. So n is going to equal, I'm just going to do a few operations there in my head, but uh, 4f over sigma pi r squared. And that's going to equal 4 times 50,000 pounds force over... Um, Okay, I should have written this out differently. Instead of writing sigma there, what I should have written is uh, yield strength over 4. So I'm just going to scratch that out and say yield strength over 4. And same thing here. Uh, this is going to be yield strength, and I've already got the 4 up there. 
So we've got uh, 4 times 50,000 pounds force divided by yield strength, which is 60,000 pounds force per inches squared times pi times 0.1875 inches, and that whole thing squared, equals, all right, so we're going to do some math out here, 4 times 50,000 is 200,000 divided by um, 60, the, the bottom should be the same, 60,000 times pi times 316 squared, we know that equals 6623.4, and that equals 200,000 divided by 6623.4, 30.2, 30.2. Equals n, and you know again we don't want to use 0.2 or one fifth of a bolt, so we'll probably just round up and say 31 bolts, and that is how you solve for different factors of safety. If you found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires. Our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.